Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Cosmet Gaming with me, Christopher, and we're back with Planescape Torment Enhanced Edition and my first playthrough of the game. Last time I kept going for more clues about Revel Puzzle, but uh, I didn't really get anywhere with that. And uh, I don't exactly know where to go from then or from here on, but we'll, we'll get into that just in a second. Uh, I did, however, manage to finish off the brothel quest line, which uh, ended up uh, with us managing to finally get Fall from Grace into our party. So she is indeed a succubus with wings, very, very cool. And she's also a priest, a very welcome addition to my party, because that means that I now have healing, finally been a while. Uh, so that's good. Uh, but yeah, I do feel a bit stuck with the main quest. If we look at the quest log, I still am at the uh, point where Lothar thinks that I should go to the Civic Festival, and that's about it. Um, but I have been, as I said, I, I, don't know, I don't know if I said it, but I have been looking up some stuff online. I've been very, very cautious as to not to spoil anything. It's... Uh, Obviously a bit difficult to uh, not spoil anything, but I've been really trying to just look at pointers about where to go. And I have some of them, and we will look into that today. Uh, the first thing we're going to do, however, and this is something that I freely admit that I missed in the last episode. I completely forgot about it, and I should have done so. I feel a little bit stupid about it, as a matter of fact. And that is indeed the language of the Dirocahedron puzzle box. Uh, I, I went with this, um, scholar or linguist in a festival that can help me, and I was just looking in the festival, looking for someone to help me. Didn't find one. Went back to the brothel and didn't find one there either. I thought that some of the girls might, you know, have information about languages, but no, none of them did. And what I completely failed to remember was, you know, Finnum the linguist's home. <laughs> or rather, Finnum the linguist. What, are, what do linguists do? Well, they double in languages, so... Yeah, should remember that. So, what we need to do, because I stored the dodecahedron, we need to go back and actually pick it up as a first thing. Uh, then we're gonna go down to Finnum and see if he cannot help me with that. And after that, we have some things to do in the lower ward. That's where our quest takes us, but not necessarily the main quest, just you know, something. Uh, there's something to do there. Uh, don't know if that is going to help me or anything, but uh, we shall see. So, let's take the dodecahedron over here. I don't... Do I need... You know what? I'm not going to store this. Let's actually have that, because it might be some point where I can actually use that. I don't know. Uh, I think that's, that's it for what we need right now. So let's go down. For some reason I went with that ex gone. exit. I don't know why. That was a bit silly. Um, ooh, 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 ooh. Yes, I have Finn's book. Good. I was about to say that maybe I can now give it to him. Wouldn't that be a, a treat? Been picking it, rather be holding on to it for some time, and he didn't even want it the first time around when I visited him, so... Uh, interesting. Like, I have your book, but... Uh, can't even say to him that I have it, so I don't know about that. Right, let's see if we cannot get this dodecahedron open and uh, find out what the contents of it is. Let's get in here and see what he says to us. Hello, Finnum. I have questions for you. Here we go. And uh, I will uh, have you know that I'm a scholar and a linguist, sir. Well, I shall happily entertain any questions regarding my field of study, language and the like. I can be of no help to you in other matters. I indeed should have remembered this, but whatever. And unfolded the, the dodecahedron to a page with writing on it and ask if he can translate it. He takes the unfolded of the cathedral in his hands and examines it closely. This language is long dead one, known to virtually no one. I believe my father, a linguist like myself, knew this language and may well have been the only man in sigil at the time that could understand it. I recognize it from his nose, but I cannot translate it. Well, do you maybe have those notes? Well, they'll be of no use to you if you're looking to translate anything. And a few actual books he had pertaining to that language disappeared around the time of his murder. Well, I would still like to watch them. 
Well, actually, we can ask about this. He was murdered? Strangled he was. He left to uh, tutor someone. He taught various languages to supplement his research income. He was discovered dead in a side chamber of the Civic Festival. The killer was never found. This was some, oh, perhaps 50 years ago now. I was but a child. But it shows that me or one of my incarnations, I don't know. So probably he knew the language, so could someone teach it still? Well, surely didn't could, were he alive today. My father was said to be a great teacher. I have a skill with language, but not his patience for others. So would he be in the mortuary? Updated my journal. Well, no, his ashes are kept here. Well, would you know? He pawns a bronze urn sitting on top of a cabinet beside a bouquet of purple flowers. Why? And uh, a necroscope are you? Speak with the dead? Well, I have the wish to speak of the thi these things any longer. You'll have to excuse me. Didn't I... Do this. Didn't I do this? But didn't get anything from it. But now I have something to do with this. Or rather, now I have a reason for this. Well, why, why have I been summoned to these ashes cold and grey as the heart of a hag? I have questions. Ask them so that I might return to my most quiet thoughts. Well, I would like for you to dis uh, uh, fix the language here. Do you know it? Yes, I know that tongue. I was a linguist and a scholar, you see. I was murdered, murdered by a student of mine, murdered, so that I could not teach another the language that I taught him. The tongue of the Uyu. It was one of the rarest in the multiverse. I knew of none who spoke it save myself and that one damnable murderous student. Yeah, probably me. Uh, because, you know, the Dodecahedron has that language on it, so probably me, but whatever. Uh, and probably also why I actually killed this guy. Uh, he, he taught me the language, a uh, really, really um, rare language. I kill him, and all of a sudden, no one knows how to do this. So that's that's that, that's probably what happened. So can you help me learn this? I can teach you this language. Yes, it would please me to do so. In fact, if only to spite that bloody hand of student for long ago. First, tell me what language you you do speak. Uh, so learn what you can from the spirit. As the spirit speaks to you of the lost language of the Uyu, there is a throbbing sensation in your templates as a memory begins to surface. Memories of this language. You recall letters, words, phrases, until, like a spire wind blowing away the blanket of the poisonous smog of the great foundry, the language is once more revealed to you in its eternity. My Entirety, not eternity. Uh, there's another memory, though, bubbling to the surface. A darker one. Its presence troubles you somehow, fills you with unease, and explains uh, pangs of guilt. I will allow it to Update surface. My journal. At last, you recall Finn Andley himself. You remember his gentle voice, his kind manner, his schooling you in the ancient language of the Uyu. See, I was correct. You also remember your scarred, gnarled hand wrapped around his frail throat, crushing his larynx and thus ensuring that the secret contents of your journal, hidden and thrice trapped in a dodecahedral puzzle box and penned in the obscure language of the Uyu, would be forever safe from prying eyes. I was double correct. So um, I'll be up in front with uh, Finn. I'm over here. Uh, the ghost. I actually am the person who killed you. Updated my journal. The spirit is silent for a time. The ashes rustling softly within the yard. <laughs> That's weird. Uh, when he speaks once more, his voice is full of sorrow. But why? And what would you come to me once more? Did you forget what you've been taught? And I, well, no. But yes, and it's difficult to explain, but I must have been a former self of mine that murdered you. Each time I die, I reawaken, as if from long sleep. I haven't, uh, but having forgotten everything, who I was, or what I've done. I think I understand. I sense your regret and would forgive you. May peace be with you, pupil of old, and may you prove kinder in this life than in the one which saw an end to mine. Thank you I for feel that. Stronger. And also level up from that. Cool. Uh, we really wish that you would level up, though, because uh, you are a little bit behind now. Uh, so let's keep leveling up and get more spell memorization. Do I get, by any chance, <gasps> level 5? I get the fire and ice. Awesome. Uh, I also completely forgot, did I actually... When did I pick up a force missile spell? I didn't buy this, did I? But I will, I will, I will learn it, because that's a pretty damn good spell as well. That is over here, so we can now remove, uh, remove curse. I don't need that. I need force missiles. Cool. Um, and Finnem. Would you be susceptible to me telling you about the murder of your father? No, you don't care whatsoever. Right. 
dodecahedron. I'm going to use you. So uh, let's unfold it Update and gather the ingredients. So the um, ingredients, the uh, contents of it. The tablet turns out to be a journal of sorts, one kept by some prior incarnation of yourself, it would seem. And not an altogether sane one either. There are only a handful of completely coherent sections, so let's start browsing. Oh, there's a lot of it. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff here. Okay, Whispering Shadows. Let's read about that. The whispers are not the shadows moving. They are speaking, plotting, talking to each other. I can understand some of what they say. Uh-huh. The female ghost. The book tells me things, whispers things. It tells me avoid the ghost girl. Avoid her. I don't know her and she torments me. Probably Dionara, I'm gonna assume. And uh, hiding something with in my own body. And so I swallowed it, hoping it catch in my bowels. I can make someone remove it when I need to. Hmm. Well, that's... That's interesting. Bowels. I have removed my bowels, but... Uh, I only have the bowels. Is there a use action on my bowels? I may not have uh, watched that. Okay. Might have to go check that out. And a paranoid ranting. I have learned that my life is not my own. I will not allow you to have my life. You will have to pull my life from my broken body if you want it. It's you who will die, and if I cannot have it, neither will you. You are responsible for this treason of flesh. You will not live to live my life. Hmm. Okay. Since, and then some accursed tattoos. The accursed tattoos will not leave my skin. I have tried to burn it off uh, of my skin. Failed. Failed. I try and cloak myself, but I always feel that people are reading my flesh, reading me like a book. Whenever they look at me, I want to tear their eyes out, pluck them from their sockets, and crush them beneath my heel. Beautiful. And also dreams and rabble. There we go. Why can't I dream? I used the goblet of Samir to force a waking dream. I saw a hag. She tempted me, threatened me with shadows. I've never seen her, but uh, she came when I dreamt. I must not dream again. I must always be aware I destroyed the goblet. She says she has uh, someone of power. She is someone of power and that she will have me. Will find me. Get away, hag. Stay far away from me. Leave me in peace, I want nothing to do with you. And there's more to this. Her voice reeked of evil's talons. Talons like spiders. Spiders don't have talons, but whatever. Uh, they burned into my grey matter. I needed her out of my mind, out, out, hag. She was a myth, a fairy tale, who alone challenged the Lady of Pain. How can one fight someone who is a myth? I don't have the weapons. I need weapons that will kill her should she find me. I need a strategy so she cannot defeat me when she comes for me. I must devise, I think, I shall beat her. And that is a good point because, I mean, I'm going for her, but I have no idea how to beat her. <laughs> so that's fascinating. And the danger of names. Fair names. Names have power in identity. Names can be used as weapons by others. They are hooked that can be used to track and find you and hunt you across the plains. Remain nameless and you shall be safe. And I think that... Did we read something similar to this in my tomb? I think we did. And the killing in the first hall. I went to the first hall looking for the path of my false self on it in its halls. So glaring was it that those I did not know, the false ones, welcomed me into their confidence, treated me as a friend, showed me my room, attended my needs. I had to restra restrain myself from launching out against them. That would have been premature. First, I need to protect my identity. I found one who knew the exclusive language of the Uyo, learned it as I could, then killed him. Then I went to the sensorium and prepared to end the matter soon, soon. Then I went to the sensorium and prepared to end the matter. Huh. Could it be that the portal to... Uh, uh, Puzzle Wall's maze is actually in the sensorium. Could it be that, uh, that, uh, orb that I touched with her? Now that I have the, uh, the rag with her, her kin's blood? Might that actually activate something? That's an interesting thought. Uh, right, last, uh, not, no, not last thing. Um, murder of one who tried to help you. 
Uh, there's nothing he can do. Memories are gone. He says never to return. He says lies and tells me this is what he told me. Lies. He says my mind is weakening from every death. Lies. He sat there betraying my confidence with every turn. He says that only after three more deaths, three more lives, I will regain again the benefit of keeping my memories. Uh, but that I, myself, I will die when I die. Die! How can one be immortal and still die? He could not answer, so he was of no use. I butchered him, so that no other incarnation will ever benefit from his uselessness. Who am I talking about? I don't know. And I have a cryptic answer from an unknown source. Okay. Uh, so the ghastly heads, heads say, you have been divided, you are one of many men, one in many men, perhaps. Uh, you bear many names, each has left their scars on your flesh. I'll continue to read that. Lost one, immortal one, incarnations end, man of a thousand deaths, the one doomed to life, restless one, one of many, the one whom life holds prisoner, the bringer of shadows, the wounded one, mer misery bringer, Yameth. I think I've heard that name before. Continue. Uh, you are silver glass that is cracked and the pieces scattered across history. Only one piece is of import. Regain that and your life will be yours again. There will be a price. This price will buy you a chance. Without the chance you are doomed. Uh, you have lost that which is never meant to be separated from man. Your mortality has been stripped from you, lost. It exists, but you must find it before your mind is lost to you as well. Now, is that everything? Interesting, because I thought that I would be getting more stuff from this. Huh. Okay. Never mind then. Okay, fine. We've, we've done that. I'm a bit confused now because, now because I thought that I would be getting some items, or at least one item from that. Okay, well, never mind. Uh, we are gonna go into this place, the Advocate's home, because apparently I did not speak to him enough, or maybe, maybe I have done something between the first time I talked to him and now. Uh, so let's speak to the Advocate. Hello, Yanis. I have questions for you. And uh, yeah, in the sensory stone in the sensorium, uh, rather there is a sensory stone in the sensorium that contains a fragment of your daughter's experiences. We uh, we relived that, didn't we? And he, his eyes blaze with hope there is, but which one you must tell me. And it is one of the sensate sensory stones. If you know how to sense it, you could not gain access. I must find a way, perhaps they would make an exception uh, for her father. And... Um, I could try to speak to someone, uh, maybe they would make an exception for Updated you, my journal. and if you could, I would be most grateful. Well, I'll see what I can, what can be done about that, and uh, indeed, I will, not, uh, I will go settle Mary shortly, and in the meantime, she left a legacy number for me. And, aha, uh -huh. it seems you spoke true. My daughter was known to you then. Well, hold on a moment, I will see what was left to you. Updated so that's my great. All the articles are accounted for, and I had no idea she had established a legacy here. And here you are, if I may, may I read them, sir? Um, it is a private matter, but I, I'll let you read them, after I've read them. Uh, and indeed, I vow that you will be able to do so. And we can, I think... Uh, no, actually, okay, let's uh, close that. So, what have we gotten? We have gotten Dionara's Legacy, uh, which reads quite a lot. My love, if you're reading this, then the tragedy I have seen has come to pass. I have died and you have remained to suffer the loss. Know this, my love, I know why you are forced to feel, shield your feelings from me. You sought to protect me from the terrible burden you carry with you. The distance you ke kept between us uh, was your way of protecting me and the brief moments when we were alone you let your feelings be known that was when i knew you cared for me carry no regrets with you carry no guilt for i came with you on your haunted journey of my own accord and no matter how death came for me i know that you did everything in your power to save me 
Our lives are intertwined, my love, and death shall not be a wall between us. For my sight has been what is to come, only in staccato segments, uh, but it is enough for me to know that we will be separated for a time. We shall be reconciled again, and thus do not see my death as a farewell, but only as an interval before we meet again. Carry my ring with you and these other pieces of me, and think of me. Keep me in your mind and heart, and that will be the beacon that brings us together. Uh, we also have a scroll of evidence. No, we don't. That's, that, that's an old thing. Uh, we have a healing scroll. A tissue-thin vellum scroll that was part of DNR's legacy. The scroll is neatly rolled up and wrapped with a red ribbon. When the ribbon is opened, the healing magic contained within the scroll is released. The scroll will heal in the most critical wounds. It disintegrates into powder when used. We also have a ring, Dionara's wedding ring, which I can use. Uh, Saving the Thrones, armor class, and armor class. Sure, I have a ring was part of Dionara's legacy. The radius is slightly low, and though it is cold to the touch, the shell is strangely comforting. Uh, among many secrets of the societal sensation is the ability to shape the peculiar stone from Elysium dubbed Soul Stone. While this stone is not as powerful as the sensory stone, the soul stone is said to carry an imprint of the shaper's feelings. These rings are often used in a sensate marriage ceremonies, each ring inscribed with the feelings of the other. This ring was obviously intended for you. When wearing a Dionar's ring, you gain added protection from all attacks, etc. etc. Uh, what do I have right now? Traveler, which is just armor class. Uh, so that's. And also, savers is poison. I'll remove the savers as poison. Uh, you know what? You can just have that. Does this mean we are engaged? I really hope it doesn't. <laughs> That's an odd, odd thing to say immediately. Um, so, we have a cool ring, and we've read the stuff that we got from that. I don't think that I had or got anything else. By the way, Phil, I'm still didn't want that, so that's good. Uh, these are just regular things. Right. Um, some questions. Here's Dionara's legacy. And you meant very much. Uh, you meant very much to my daughter. She was willing to give up her life for you. Updated and that my probably is true. Yes. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your kindness. And uh, there might be more that you can help me with. And I don't know if I can find out more here. So what could you tell me about the fire? Uh, nothing much to say the matter with strange localized fire. Have you found anyone? Uh, neither Harmony nor the Mercy Killers have any fortune located the person responsible. So what was burned? A number of old legacies. So we know about legacies, but I'll just ask anyway. Uh, contracts delivered to death of the client, as and they may be wills. Anything about dustman contracts? Uh, they are deliverable at the time of the client's death. Bequeath the client's body to the dustman. And how would I go about to invalidating one of those? One that's already signed. Leaving nothing can be done. The dustman contract is quite specific of the destination of the corpse. Um, okay. Do you owe for that? No, not really. Uh, I don't think there is anything else. Because this just leaves to the legacy thing. And uh, no, I don't think I can do much more than that. So we've done that. That's at least something. And uh, why don't I go up to the festival and see if I can actually give him access to done. that sensory stone? Because I think that this might be a simple matter. And I don't re really know if we get anything else from that. But the thing is, we are supposed to get a document this as far as I've gotten in my little research. Uh, I don't know. Um, can you help me? Uh, I have another question. Here we go. There's a man, Iannis, whom I was hoping you would grant temporary access to the private sensorium. Uh, what's the reason? Well, because one of the stones there contained a fragment of his daughter's experiences. She died far from home, not having seen him in a long while, and he mourns her loss deeply. Updated my journal. Well, we shall allow this Janus to enter the private sensorium, well escorted, of course. You may tell him he has permission. Awesome, Splinter. Cool of you. So let's uh, rush back right. to the Advocate's home and deal with that.
the door just closed in my face. Bloody hell. No, it wasn't in my face. I'm not even there yet. Um, so I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to get anything more from this. So we shall um. see what happens here. So, the advocate. Yes, we have granted you permission, and I mean your debt. Well, just go and have that experience on your journey. daughter. And I think that's about it. Uh, yeah, I don't think we can do anything else with you. So, slightly... Done. Slightly perturbed here that I didn't get what I... Th thought I would be getting, but never mind. Uh, let's go back to the lower ward, because there is more that we can do there. And also, by the way, this map, there is absolutely more locations. We've done like half of it. <laughs> We're quite far into the game already, and I think we just done half of it. So that's beautiful. Um, right, there is a guy over here that we have talked to, but I apparently didn't talk to him enough. Uh, Guildspur. Do you have any jobs to, for me to do? I certainly do, friend. I have a little errand for you to run, if you'll take it. Um, it'll net you 50 coins. All you need to do is run this handbill down to the print shop and ask Scofflaw Pen to print up 100 copies for me. Here, take it. Thank Updated you for that. My journal. And, uh, I... So what can you, by the way, tell me about the godsmen? Uh, I don't think that this is interesting. Group of people close to my heart. They say uh, we are all of our own gods, that we have potential for godliness within our spirits, from the lowest beggar to the highest king. We, we all nurse gods in our breasts. Who could think of something finer? Probably the harmonium. Good answer, a fine one. Um, I don't think that there is... Because I don't want to... Well, I can actually sell stuff to you. And what do you actually do? Uh, you just sell stuff. I would like to sell stuff. So let's barter, because uh, I have a bunch of stuff that we can actually sell to him. Uh, earrings and the likes. So sell that. Mort has a whole bunch of things. To that I don't need to pick up more of those, because that's not a whole lot of money. I would like to be up uh, over 7,000, because I can get Mort some extra damage stuff. I'll sell the Chromatic Orb 1, uh, we'll keep that for now, yeah, that's fine. Uh, so that's that, we shall also make our way in here, and we'll have a bit of a chat with the guy up at the forge, or furnace, because apparently I did not talk to him enough either. Uh, so hello, Laszlo. Um, what can you tell me about this ward? Well, you see, there's a lower ward, common folk live here, like me and my dad. Do you know why it's called the lower world ward? Well, why is it called the lower ward? Well, as uh, it's reckoned, the ward got a mess of portals to lower planes already through like she's, so it does. So I suppose that's why the name is stuck. And why is there, rather, why are there so many lower plane portals? Well, it's a mystery to me as it is to you, Cutter. Not sure if there is a reason for the portals as much as your circumstances. Could be the the ladies will could just be chance suppose so do any creatures come out of these well they do most of them just stopping through so yeah now you're getting a bit nervous here have you seen this yourself well i have seen it, it was just last week or so i saw a couple of abishai coming through a portal they talked a good bit and then one of them went back through the one that stayed is still there. So what were they talking about? I don't know for sure, to me it was just hissing and such, but I think they was talking about the tower. What tower? Updated my journal. Well, the one of the strangest things to be in the ward. No one really knows how long this scarred old tower has been around. You can't get into it, you know. Bolted up tighter than a chastity belt. Uh, I'd be curious to know what's in there. The Abishai was gesturing at the tower and the portal that was looking for the key, I bet. So what key, you mean? Well, the key to the portal that leads to the tower. Every portal has a key that opens it somewhere. The key can be a gesture, an item, or even a thought. Many have tried hard to get into the tower, no matter how hard you try, you fail. Well, you know, we've learned a couple of things or two about entering portals. Uh, maybe the secret is to not want to get Updated in. My journal. Well, I don't know. Maybe. So where Updated would this portal be? And uh, there's a drawbridge like contraption back of the tower, east of the market. That's where it is. Well, fair enough. Yeah, I apparently 
completely blanked on that little inter interchange or exchange maybe you should say uh, so do that and now we head up here this is the siege tower that we're talking about we do have a drawbridge uh, over here well we have two drawbridges but this is obviously on the tower so move up here and here we go uh, your press location of the portal that the boy last spoke of You've been to replay your conversation with him in your head. Maybe the secret to getting in is not want to get in. I shall suppress any desire to enter the tower. And there we go. Portal. We are now inside the siege oh, tower. We have this fun guy. Hello. Can we... Uh, coax metal. I wanna... Can I, can I talk to you? Here we go. Uh, you see an iron creature. Its size is staggering... If it stood full height, it would shatter the roof of the siege tower. Thundering echoes rattle the whole walkway as the creature hammers away on his forge and the smell of soot and ash fills the air. Hello! My journal. There's a screaming of metal on metal as the giant turns to face you. You suddenly realize the golem is built into the siege tower itself. Girders, pipes and huge braziers run through its lower torso and into the walls. And the bottom portion of his body makes up for the forge itself. So what are you exactly? I am iron given purpose. And what purpose is that? I forged the implements by which the multiverse will be unmade. That doesn't sound good. Um, yeah, weapons, you see. Uh, metal is like flesh. Both carry potential in their veins. When tempered with heat and pressure, the potential surfaces. My purpose is to bring forth this potential. Allow it expression. So, um, who exactly do you do weapons for? Our fortune for the sake of entropy, their pain seeking expression. And why would entropy need weapons? Well, beyond this tower, order rallies its legions. The multiverse heals its wounds in time, its strength may equal entropy. Uh huh, so why have you sort of seen the multiverse as your enemy? My the multiverse breathes, it grows, it stagnates, it forges its chains around the planes, link by link. Time, even entropy, may be shamed. Huh, okay. Are you perhaps against that? When a thing, it's, uh, when a thing seals itself against its own destruction, it merely dies a different death. Okay, so mortality just might be a different kind of death to you. Okay, we can say that. And uh, we have truths that we can say. Except that death you seem to offer is violent and senseless without meaning. Or, true enough, so what made you take up Entropy's cause? Yeah, why did you? Uh, all things have common ground in decay. War is necessary, death is necessary, decay is necessary. Uh-huh. I'll, I'll, I'll agree to that in some ways. All must fall upon Entropy's blade. A time nears when it will be necessary to breach the walls of creation. Order will be put to the sword. Its chains will be broken. The multiverse will be unmade. Well, that's fun. Um, right. Is this the... Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, let's just ask something else. No, actually, I've learned now. Keep, keep asking stuff. Um, keep asking stuff. Because we haven't asked everything here. So indeed, can you do anything with my weapons? Uh, show me what you have brought. I will study its potential and see if its uh, pain can be given expression. Uh, okay. Do I do I sell things or do I just buy things from him? Well, I don't know. We have some spiked gauntlets of ogre power, though. That's fun. And punch daggers of Shar. Can anyone use? It? Can, do you have anything for Mort? No, you don't. Do you have anything for any one of mine? Well, okay, she can have these. So that's uh, Enchanted plus one. She can also have these. I think that what she has is already better. Well, that was kind of boring, to be honest. Uh, oh, th there was the icon. Um, let's uh, see if there was anything else that we can say. Uh, why do you do this? Uh, here we go. Uh, the iron on my body once existed only as minor expressions of pain. Blades, spears, axes, arrowheads, rivets and catapults. From these implements of war was I wrought. Okay, what happened exactly? Uh, these minor expressions of pain were melted to forge this body. My potential was allowed to surface. Now my purpose is to bring out the potential in other metals. 
okay. And uh, that is now we're back to entropy and stuff like that. I have another question. So what is this place? Uh, this tower is a siege engine. It is six to breach the walls between planes. Well, that could probably help me in some ways, maybe. How can you breach the planes? The tower anchors itself upon a plane. A wound is torn in the multiverse when the breach of the lower uh, of the tower opens. Legions may pass from one plane to the other through the tower. When the plane has served entropy's purpose, the tower anchors itself again. Okay, what happened to those legions then? Entropy has unmade them. Aha. Uh -huh. And what happened to the planes that the siege tower has invaded? Entropy has unmade them. Okay, fun. So what are you doing right now? Uh, I'm forging the implements by which the multiverse will be unmade. Aha, uh -huh. we've already talked about that. Uh, so why do you make weapons? And that is the same as before. Um, okay, tell me more what you can do. Uh, metal is like flesh, both carry potential in their veins. When tempered with heat and pressure, the potential surfaces. My purpose is to bring forth this potential, etc, etc. And that's the same as we've already asked. And apparently I can now ask him about the blood war. <laughs> okay. It is the war by which the planes will be unmade. And how long is that been going on? The lifetime of many metals. And did you serve in it? Yes, uh, it was on this forge that the screaming projectiles that tore the smoking skies of Avernus were made. Weapons so sharp the wind itself knew agony. Uh huh. And also, what do you know about Ravel? The Night Hag sought to sunder this city. Her greatest work, uh, works were those of Unmaking. She walked the path of entropy. Do you Updated know what happened? My journal. Order set chains about her. She was cast within a cage. And do you know where this cage is? Her prison is sadly unknown to him. Okay, I think I must have exhausted everything here. So that's a fun little thing. Uh, don't know how much that actually helped me. Uh, but we have made it in here and know now how to get in here. So that's cool. So let's get out. And we are supposed to go to the print shop. And I also like that we get out here. Which is a bit interesting at the well here. Now, here's the thing. We've gotten now a uh, Gitzber's handbill. Deliver to scuffle pen for printing. And there we go. I here's Because here's the thing. I would like to get into this place. I've co I completely forgot about this. Uh, we needed something in order to make our way in here. And uh, I've been having uh, some issues with actually finding something. Uh, I can say I'm here to pick up an order, uh, but the thing that I just have, rather the thing that I just picked up, it uh, does not work, sadly. So that's not that's not a choice. Um, by the way, can I just? Uh, Hi. Can't 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 I just? Uh, right. Oh oh, apparently not. Um, so I don't think that that oh, is God. the document I need. So why don't we go to this place and fill? Or rather, live, turn this in. Uh, so it's off to Scofflaw Pen. And uh, I have some questions. Gitzburr, ask me to deliver a handbill to you so you can print up a hundred copies. And it takes the handbill from you, looks it over. I'll have it for him later. Go tell him. Farewell. Nothing more to do um. with that. <laughs> So let's uh, head down to Guildspur again. And I think that this will be the last thing we do in this episode. But uh, as you can see, there are more things for me to do. Quite a lot more things, as a matter of fact. Um, so, Guildspur, hello. I did the thing that you said. Well, it's pretty terrific. I knew uh, you were the man for the job. Here, take this message to Keldor of Durian at the Foundry. Here we go. I'm sure you'll be glad to uh, receive it, and you'll be glad of the 100 coins you get in return. Thank you for that. Updated my journal. Oh, there we go. Uh, fine. Cool. So, uh, I now have Gildspur's note. This is the note Gildspur's asked you to deliver to uh, Keldor of Durian in the Great Foundry. It looks like it's a private note, but you don't seem to have any scruples about reading it. Upon further examination, it appears it is just a bill for Gildspur's promotional services. You're a little disappointed that it's not something more exciting. And by the way, now that I'm here, 
Hello, Byron. Can I say something about... Uh, no. <laughs> Doesn't want to talk to me. Fair enough. Um, right. Hello. I would like to talk to you. Uh, that's the incorrect button. Um, I have a message for Keller from Gilsborough, the auctioneer. Thank you, sir. You'll find him in the Great Gossman Hall. And he opens the gate for me. Hello. I actually didn't expect that. So, okay, I'm not going to end the episode right now, because we are now able to go into the foundry. A new area. Very, very cool. Uh, so let's get in here and see what we can find. This is... Uh, as far as I've read, I have no idea what we are going to find in here. Uh, we have a bunch of foundry workers. I mean, that's... Uh, the story checks out. It is a foundry. Bunch of uh, rail tracks here. We have one named person, Nadilin. Or Nadilin. Uh, why is it old man with trembling hands and a cunning face? Uh, he looks over to me and... Hell, uh, you haven't seen it before. You seem familiar to me somehow. Well, it could be possible. I never get a face, so come to me uh, to bother with it. And uh, Might you remember something? It might be important. Not so fast, lad. It takes a while for the mind to warm up to a task like this. I've lived for a long time and I've seen a lot more faces in that time. It ain't so easy to remember. Memory's a fleeting thing, and that's something you can bank on. Well, tell me about it, lad. Oh, before replying, you mutter, I mutter. Tell me about it, lad. That, wait, what? Am I, am I saying this? I, I don't know. Or is this something that I remember him saying, maybe? Um, okay, never mind. Uh, I'm I can apparently say that I'm here to pick up an item. Uh, I still don't have an item, <laughs> or rather, a receipt. Um, okay, um, can we pressure him here? No, I cannot. Uh, well, who are you then? I am Nadeline Gossman, fighter extraordinaire. At least I used to be. Now I'm a clerk at the foundry, breathing in the sooty air and hastening my dying day along. Fair enough. Uh, I just want to see your smiling face. Aww. Bless you, son, and now excuse me, I have some windows to look out. Okay, it doesn't seem too friendly. Um, gear for the forge. Uh, you're wanted to be a smith now. Very well, you'll need an apron, ten copper, some tongs, another ten, and a hammer, which will be twenty. Uh, that would be fifty copper. You know, I think that's forty copper. What am I thinking? Of course it is. Well, give me that stuff. I don't know if I need it, but I'll take it. Uh, more questions... No. Okay, so I've got a set of uh, stuff for a forge. Uh-huh. Can I even wear this? No, I cannot wear that. Ah, uh -huh. I have a, a set for a forge. I don't know who... <laughs> Do I need this? No clue. Let's keep going. Uh, we have guards. We have guardsmen. Filden. You seem interesting. Can I... Please talk to you. A slab-stomached man with a thick arms uh, and a scraggly beard. He smells as if he hasn't washed in ages, and his breath doesn't do much for your breakfast. He's in the process of ordering around subordinates as you approach him, and he deals a quick cuff to the ear of one of them. He turns to face you, hitching up his belt. What do you want? Well, I have questions. Who are you? Thilda the Grey, supervisor for this yard. My job, it is to make sure my laborers get their jobs done, and make sure that people like you don't distract them. They work little enough as it is, the little salts, they'd manage to lose the rest of the day in idleness if I weren't here. I'm tough, but I'm fair. Ask anyone. So, what's up with the grey? Because I'm covered in suit most of the time from those blasted furnaces. It's a nickname my labor laborers have given me out of affection, no doubt. Well, I can be sarcastic here uh, and say they really seem to respect your gentle soul. Are you suggesting that I'm not entirely fair to my workers? Because I am. I'm like a father to them. Well, you keep beating them around, then it's not maybe that good, you know. Well, you might be too fair. Probably. Potentially. You really think so? You're saying a better thing about how I treat them? Well, I will. Chances are good I'll keep doing it the way I've been, uh, the way I have been, too. Now get out of here. No, 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 I'm gonna keep asking stuff. And I was calling for the guards. Oh, l let's not have the guards over here. Uh, okay, we have another person. Alyssa Teed. Teeled. Lee Burke. No, 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 I'm gonna... Okay, fair enough. Uh, can't talk to you. 
I get to the doors in just a second, and that actually seems to be it for here. Unless there's something here. No, there's not. Right, can I go into the doors? I seem to be able to. Cool. Uh, we have the Godsman's Hall, more people. This is Sarosa. I advise you to leave. You can find no test worthwhile in fighting our guards. Get the gun. And I'd like to ask you some questions. I will not answer your questions while the guards require another task of you. Do the guards require a task? Do they? You've been asked. Oh. Oh. Done. Did I screw this up immediately? Well, this is not good. How do I... How do I fix this? I don't want to go. Well, okay. All right. Can I... Can I... Avoid people? All right. Potentially? Or is no one going to talk to me now? Well, we have a fancy person here. You no longer leave our true regards shall take our ship. Okay, can I redo this? Because it feels like I've screwed myself over here. Let me do a reload for when I went into the foundry. Right. <laughs> I'm back here. I had to redo everything. By the way, because uh, uh, I only had one order saver, that was when I went through that door. So, uh, yeah, maybe I should save a bit off more often because there's only one order save uh, in total. So, yeah, whatever. The fun thing is, when I was at Finham's, I either missed this uh, dialogue option or I clicked something wrong, but I was actually able to return the book to him. So I, I finished the uh, quest differently this time, or the task, maybe I should say, differently. Um, I handed him his book, which apparently was the notes that we needed. We got a book in return, uh, Finn Adlai's notes, and uh, we learned it by using it, and we didn't even have to talk to his fa father. And in the end, that actually earned us more XP, so Anna was actually able to level her fighting class up one level. So that turned out well. Uh, now I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna hold off talking to uh, Thildon over here. By the way, if I talk to you now, uh, come at some bored looking man. What's behind these uh, guarded doors? That's a secret. In from our valued faction members, unless you're involved in the project yourself, or unless you receive authorization from one of the high ups, we can't allow you in. Okay, that might have been why I screwed that up. Right. Where would the clerk's office be? Uh, you're south of the main foundry, sir. You'll find an office with a desk in it. That's the clerk's office. And the high ups? Either Sandros or Keller should be able to aid you in this matter. Keller is the main meeting hall just through the door on the right side of the main foundry. Sandros can usually be found in the rooms to the rest rear of the hall. Okay. Uh, let's not ask about that. I'm just gonna ignore Thilden. Bloody hell. Uh, don't, don't talk to him. Uh, at all. So these are, uh, let's see here, that is the armory. So can I go in here? Uh, what guarded doors? Where's the clerk's office? South of the main foundry. Uh-huh. So does that... Godsman Saw, Godsman Armory. I mean, presumably in here. Not there. Can I go here? Not here. Well, okay. Well, then I assume that you're not talking about this door. So I'm just going to assume that I can go through here. Because this is the only one that's uh, unlocked. So, Sarosa, will you actually talk to me now? Okay. Yes, she does seem to be <laughs> open to talking to me. A young woman, as you approach her, eyes stare directly to yours. You get the uncomfortable feeling that she's not just examining your eye color. Her gaze seems to penetrate far deeper than that. Greetings, stranger. How goes your day? Well enough. Can you answer some stuff? Um, ooh, why do you call me Half-Man? I call you Half-Man because I cannot see your spirit. All other mortals who pass through my life show their spirits to me as a shining spark or a smoldering ember. So you can basically see auras or something. You show nothing at all. 
I call you half man because I cannot see your spirit as I see those of others. Whether this is because you have no soul or because you have been transcended, I cannot say. One way or another, you are but a half a man, and but the other half is, I cannot say. And, uh, well, she's, she's right. I simply don't have a soul right now. Well, uh, can I as ask you something? Who are you? I'm Sarosa, daughter of Sandos, one of the fact factors of the godsmen. And what is a factor? Uh, let's uh, ask about your family. My brother Saros is a shallow the foundry, yet I fear he has never embraced the philosophy of the believers of the source. My father is a factor here, and his travels have led him far from the foundry and into realms most mortals never even dream of achieving. So what about your brother? Saros is a brash, impulsive lad, easily given over to his manhood. He is eager to prove himself equal uh, of anything on the plains, full of the aggression of youth. I believe he feels himself more sensate than God's man, further vindicating my belief that the senseis are the most immature of all the factions of Sijo. I wouldn't agree on that. Yeah, why, why would they be immature? Uh, why are the most immature? Because, like children, they do not understand that there is more beyond the world of the senses, beyond what one can see, hear, taste, touch, and smell. Look around you. You are on the outer planes. This is belief made solid. Uh, but that does, does not mean this seemingly rough matter can be comprehended by the senses. This is belief. No mere physicality can match it. And I mean, in a way she's true, or correct in that. I mean, there are abstract things that are necessarily available to the senses. But I wouldn't call it them immature just because of that. But oh well. Um, do you have anything else to tell me? Uh, apparently nothing. Done. So now we know that we can actually go through here. So maybe Mr. Keldor here might actually talk to me. Let's see if he does. A sturdy man who looks like he's just bursting with vitality. His face is tan and li lined, lined, and his black beard is beginning to show hints of white. Hail, stranger, and well met. What can I do for you this fine day? My, have the tone changed since I was here last time. Well, um... I'll deliver the message immediately. Why not? I have something from Gilspur the Auctioneer. A message, eh? Very well, you can tell him the message is delivered. Was there anything else? Well, I have questions. Who are you? My friend, I'm Keldor of Durian, one of the factotums of the godsmen and nominally in charge of this place while our true high ups are gone in conclave. Uh huh, so what can you tell me about the godsmen? Um, how do I join the godsmen? Uh, if you wish to join the believers of the source, you must complete three quests. The first quest is this. You must go to the forge and create an item. That's why we got the tools then. This will show that you are capable of seeing the possibilities inherent in even a base lump of iron, and that you are capable of bringing forth something that will stand the test of time. It measures your vision and your ability to make the potential actual. Talk to Alyssa, the founder supervisor in the main founder, to see how it all works. Updated my journal. Right, if I wanted to join them, uh, potentially, I, I, I wouldn't mind being a god, you know, definitely wouldn't mind that. And what about this place? And this is the Great Foundry, home of the Believers of the Source, also known as a Godsman. Here we make items that ship all over the plains, uh, renowned in many worlds, only the best work here. It's said that we've got a staff of smiths that rival those in Mount Clanket in itself. Personally, I don't think we're that good, but we are close. Uh, so do you take on additional work? Sally friend, we cannot. We're engaged in a long-term contract right now that's taking up most of our resources. Perhaps when we're finished, in a matter of years. My apologies. That's fair enough. Um, okay. There is apparently a secret project that I can ask about, but um, let's talk with the forge. And uh, apparently nothing. So what about the secret project that, that I apparently know of? Friend, I can't give that to you until you prove yourself a friend of the godsman. Okay, so, secret project is available to me if I am a godsman. Now, I don't necessarily know that I would like to be a godsman. If they are about, like, forging stuff, that's not going to be super important to me. But here's here's Saros. Hello. A sandy-haired youth on the cusp between adolescence and adulthood, and from his eyes it looked like he's trying to be a, as adult as possible without having the slightest idea of how. In other words, he seems innocent. 
Hey, stranger, what can I do for you? Let me ask you some stuff. Tell me about yourself. Well, I'm Saros. I grew up around here. Got around through the foundry, playing with stuff. I like pretty much everyone here, except for Thinlan. He keeps saying that I'm not raised right and that my father is a poor parent. All I know is that Thinlan is the biggest salt I ever met. Okay, fair enough. Um, what about the Great Foundry? When I grew up here, I played in the main foundry area, ran through the barracks. It stinks and it's loud and people can be like Thildon, but it's still home to me. And what about the people then? There are smiths and workers, I think they mean well, but they're also earnest and boring. They need to liven themselves up a bit, like, say, the Sensates. Oh, you kind of like them, do you? They know how to live life. They know what it's all about. Not like these people. They keep pretending there's some big noble purpose to it all, but I don't see it. My sister says that life is more than our senses show, but I don't see how she knows that, since all she knows is through her senses. I just don't get why people make this up. So who's your sister? Well, we know that, but whatever. Sarosa? She... <laughs> I like this also. Saros and Sarosa. <laughs> Their parents made it easy for themselves. Uh, she gets to look at someone and see what needs adding and what needs taking away. I don't know how she does it. My father always said it was something about her ascending to another level. He said she was born a godsman. Okay. That is a bit fascinating. I, I'll get to the door over there, but I did notice these stairs here. Leading to doors and also bed I lean. A severe woman with flaming red hair pulled back tight, giving her face a stretched, nervous look. She appears to be deep in thought. At your approach, she glances up and says, Can I help you with something? I have questions. What do you want? Uh, tell me about the foundry. And uh, you can ask almost anyone here else about the foundry, and you'll get the same answer. What makes you think I'll give one that's different? Ask another question. Okay, what product are you working on? Tell you about the products we've sworn our lives to complete and defend? Uh, no, I don't think so. Not yet, anyway. Let's just say it's powerful and it'll be worth the effort we've put into it. Cool. Um, so what about the people? Uh, other people? Well, you got the brilliant but eccentric Neil Zander. The Gitzerai outcast woman Kellera. Phil the Grey, whose heart is as much less ambiguous than his name. Kelder the Factor. Sandos the Factor. The two children of Sandos. Supervisor, Smiths, and a host of others. They all passed me by at one point or another, and frankly, I haven't made that much of an effort to get to know them. They work for me, or they don't, and that's about as much as I care, I'm afraid. I'm rather devoted to my work. Aha, uh -huh. and exactly who are you? Uh, my name is Bedai Lean. I'm a magical engineer, not a mage, mind you, but a theoretician. Uh, I'm going to make sure that the Gossmen don't get a chance to use that weapon or contract for other such weapons of war again. Aha. Uh -huh. So are we allowed into these places? Are these ah, these are just dwellings. Right. A dwelling with a lot of bookcases that are completely void of anything. Cool. Right. Uh, also a bit of a look at these. If there's an anything or anyone interesting. This one had a, another smaller bookshelf here. Uh, we didn't apparently need to look at that either. Done. I wouldn't really call these dwellings, really, uh, but fair. Uh, here we go. And yeah, Done. I'm going to assume that this, this looks exactly the same and contains exactly as few things as the other ones. Yes. Okay, well, that was uninteresting. I'm gone. So, question. Uh, can I go through that door without the guards bothering me? And can I just... Do I need to ask these about that? So, where's the clerk's office? Uh, south of the main foundry. Oh, it's actually... Oh, that might be him that I wanted to talk to. Yes. And the high-ups... Uh, Keller is here. Saddle screen should be found in rooms to the rear of the hall. Uh huh. Can I go through here? I apparently can. Uh, we have Neil Sander. We've heard about you. A bushy haired man clad in the height of fashion, if you consider fashion to have died 50 years ago. His clothing seems to consist of tattered street urchin rags and seems to affect uh, a disdainful manner toward those around him. Well, that might be his actual manner. He doesn't even glance at you until you speak to him. Do you want something? Well, who are you? I'm Neil Zander, great grandson of the artificer Zero Zander, engineer, dreamer, creator. And I have finished his work, the work that you commissioned, the Dream Builder. Are ready to claim the use of it now? Oh, did I? You seem to remember me. 
Uh, a dream builder, what's that? It's both machine and ritual. It is a state of mind and a construct of steam and blood. It grants dreams to those who enter its confines. It was built for you and it's waiting for you. I ready to fidget it off. It has been waiting for you for decades. Well, how do you know it was built for me? Because my great grandfather, Zeno Xander, set your face in stone so that we would know you when you returned for the work you commissioned. He always thought you'd return, but no one else truly believed you would. Our family completed it because we said we would, and now here you are. So, you still have it? No, obviously not. It was stolen from me a year ago. I saw only a shadow flitting away. It was the only item taken from my home. I have no idea who took it, but I'd memorized the features. Okay. Let us finish it then. Uh, what I need to begin the, what I need to begin the finalization of the dream builder is a piece of your skin immersed in your blood, uh, so the machine can familiarize itself with your physical essence. It must be in blue green bottles, symbolize the dream sea on which you will float. Uh huh. Okay. This has a question. I'm not. In no, I am interested. Um, okay. How do I do that? You don't? Well, then maybe you ought to remember that you're fetching this item for the sun you funded, for a product you wanted created in the first place, for a device so Im impractical that the solution to it consumed the lives of four generations of my family. All for you. If you want to see the product complete, you'll fin finish the final station and stop your endless whining. Aw. I don't take the tone with me or you'll find you're the last one rather. No, 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 no. Stop yelling at me. Okay. And for some weird reason, did I not even... I didn't even get a note for that. Okay. Well, let's uh, ask you more questions. What about the godsman? A long subject, let's get started on it. Now, oh, I don't want to read about that. Really. Okay, so the factors are killer and we know about that. Uh, not really. Uh, what about the co-workers? Uh, they don't possess a true fire. They speak of creation and they boast of the potentials, but they do not create anything uh, beyond the mundane. Their imaginations are poor, limited, obsessed with the small details. A true dreamer, I say, creates a grand scheme and then concentrates on the details. That's charitable of you. And what did you do here? Well, I'm the engineer of all engineers. I studied under the Tanari Smith Kassan, who tempered swords on a forge of hate, quenched them in a throw, throw, throw of despair, and then sent them forth to slaughter stupidity. Elements of phrases, caustic words were brought to him, and he created weapon, weapons of terrifying magnitudes, weapons that would lay an enemy low and destroy the malformed ideas of others. I'm sure you've seen his work. So, are we talking evil weapons? Not at all. My force is not built on hate, but on understanding. I also studied under the Archon artisan Terrasphiria, who created the healing touch of a gentle thought, ideas that would still any fiendish spitting heart. He worked his uh, will with love and devotion. My work blends theirs, as all mortal psyches blend elements of the demonic and the sublime. So, are your co-workers as well trained? No, they are not. Okay. So, we need a blue and green bottle, somehow. Where would I oh find that? And where the hell am I now? And why do I feel I shouldn't go in here? No. Uh, there's nothing else here. I'm gonna stay clear of Thilda right. the Grey for now, though. Because uh, that just seems like a bad idea. Anything else in here? That's just levels... That's the factor's room. No, no, no. Let's open the door. Go through. Can I talk to... Do I want to join the Godsman? Done. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but is there anyone else here? I would assume that none of these doors work for me. Until I become a Godsman. Well, okay. Um, can I work any of these? Uh, here we go. Ah. So this is the one that I could use. Okay, fair enough. You know what? Let's put a cut in here. I don't know if I'm closer to Puzzle Well, but uh, we've done some more stuff. Might mean that I have to keep looking uh, for clues about where to go. But uh, yeah, always fun to visit new places. So in the next episode, we shall see if I can... Uh, 
if I can get any closer to possible, because I feel like I want to, but uh, we, we shall see, is the short of it. For now though, this has been Goldsmith Gaming with me, Christopher. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.